Uno, dos, one, two, tres, cuatro. Good morning, good morning everybody. Welcome to Rethink Your Legacy. My name is Francisco Servent. If this is the first time you're joining, then welcome. Uh, I'm an estate planning attorney here in Chandler, Arizona, and, and we are uh, we practice estate planning and probate out of Keystone Law Firm. If you haven't heard of us, if this is your first time joining, welcome, welcome. If you need help with any of that stuff, jot down this phone number. It will entitle you to a free first phone call with my team, and we can help figure out what's going on, anything related to wills, trusts, estates, probate, anything like that. Uh, give us a call. The phone number is 480-750-7788. Eight. Uh, so this morning, what are we doing today? Uh, it's Sunday. I hope you guys are, I hope you're just barely rolling out of bed, getting a cup of coffee. Today, we're going to talk about trust funding a little more. I've gone into this in depth on some shows previously, but I, as I'm, as I'm going through my weeks, we run into more and more problems that are, you know, that are just still out there. So it kind of focuses what I'm going to talk about. And this week it's going to be on the, the consequences of getting your beneficiaries named wrong. So very often we run into problems. We see what people do and usually it's after the problem can't be fixed. You know, it's after somebody has passed away and the consequences obviously can be completely ridiculous, but here you are, you get to listen, learn these mistakes that people make and fix them. So your job today is to go get my free download. There's no catch. There's no whatever. Just go get it. I'm going to give you a download for how to name your beneficiaries correctly. Is that, is that fair? Good. Here's where you go to get it. You go to my website, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. And you just enter your name and email. The system will send it over to you. It's a nice little PDF report. How to name beneficiaries. It's not complicated. You just got to know what the techniques are for all the different hypothetical situations. So you get it right. We had a gal, I'm sorry, we had a, well, the gal passed away. And um, these, or I'm reversing it, sorry. The dad passed away. These two gals called us and said that their, you know, their dad had passed away. It was, uh, they were going through and trying to administer all of his stuff and collect his affairs. The, their mom wasn't really in the picture anymore for this. They had divorced something like 20 years ago. And they had just been told that his 401k account he never changed the beneficiary from her, from his now ex-wife of 20 years. And instead, it still named the ex-wife. Hmm. So the daughters were saying, you know, this company is telling us that we're not the beneficiaries, even though his will says we are. What do we do? That's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to help you guys make sure that doesn't happen to you. Whether you are married, whether you are single, uh, especially if you're in a long-term relationship, but you're not legally married, no such thing as common law in Arizona. So if you, any of those situations, even if you're especially young and you don't really feel like you have, you know, kids or spouse or anything, you don't have beneficiaries, then all of these things are really, really critical for you to learn today. So let's, let's just dig in and start covering it. So what do you get? Go get the article, go get the handout of how to name your beneficiaries. It's going to cover these 10 mistakes. Here's the first couple. Um, the first one that we see is what I just referred to in that story of that guy who passed away is not keeping him up to date. Uh, why does that matter so much? What if you, what if, I mean, he did a will, you know, he got his will done that said, I leave everything now to my two daughters. So which one controls, uh, you need to know that your beneficiary designation on that account at that financial institution is what controls your will does not trump that your if you have a trust it does not trump that you are you are saying something else in your will and your trust you're saying whatever is in my trust 
goes according to this or whatever is in my quote unquote estate goes according to my will. But on the bank or the life insurance or the IRA or the 401k or whatever you're putting a beneficiary on at the institution, that beneficiary designation is going to control. So especially if you're getting a divorce, you need to go update that. If you if you had a spouse pass away, you need to update that. If you've changed your will, you need to make sure it is still current. You've got to keep those up to date. It is our, I mean, I do this with all of our clients, or me or someone on my team does it with all of our clients. We ask, we just ask that question every year. Have you double-checked the beneficiaries on this account, that account, this account, that account, this life insurance, that annuity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They have to be checked. And what ended up happening with this one um, guy who passed away for his two daughters, the mom, the ex-wife, had kind of been estranged from the daughter, so she didn't want to just sign it over. It was a lot of money. So what did they do? They had to file something in court. They had to go to court to fight for it. And in the end, they lost. The The way that the law, this was, you know, this was maybe more than 10 years ago, the way the law was at the time, that particular type of account, it did not automatically revoke the designation to the ex-wife when they got divorced. There are some types of accounts that do get automatically revoked, but not all of them. And in that particular case, it didn't. And so in that particular case, it went to this long lost ex-wife that he never, ever would have intended for her to get it. So you've got to check these things. If you have, if you're sitting there and you're listening to my voice and you're thinking, yeah, I do. I probably need to check that. I haven't checked that one. Er, Francisco's getting into my mind. Oh, he's getting, how does, how does he know that I needed to check this? Don't beat yourself up. Here's the best way to get, get that reminder, right? Go to the website, radio.keystonelawfirm.com have it send you the email with this handout. So you've got it. You can follow the instructions there. Once you've got that, the next thing you should do is put a reminder on your phone to call that bank or that institution tomorrow during business hours. Just put a reminder on your phone right now and say, call, you know, Bank of America, call Merrill Lynch, call Charles Schwab, whoever it is. And check on my beneficiaries. It's just a quick phone call. I know a lot of them are doing it online, and that can be frustrating. It can also be pretty simple. So put yourself a reminder to do that. Check and make sure you don't break and don't make this one big mistake that so many people make of failing to update the beneficiaries. Ugh. Okay. Um, the other thing about updating your beneficiaries is that sometimes the, these institution, these these forms within the institution, they do change, like where you designate your beneficiaries, and they'll they change their own form. So you have more options sometimes, and sometimes that's good because I've seen so many hundreds of these forms that have very limited options, and it's like none of these really fit what I want to do. So you have to put put something on there that you don't really want. So you may want to go back and look at it just to see if you can get something on there that's closer to what you really want. Okay. I hope that that's the first and biggest mistake is failing to keep it up to date, those beneficiary designations. If you want this handout, it will tell you all of these mistakes, it'll tell you how to designate your beneficiaries according to your estate plan. It'll give you the standard recommendations. Um, these are the tools we give to our clients that I'm giving to you guys. Just your job to go to the website and get it for free, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Enter your name, enter your email, it'll send it right to you, and there you go, poof, it's saved in your inbox. If you just need help, either because you this all this stuff is just confusing to you, you're not sure how to do it, you don't want to mess it up, or you're unfortunately dealing with a situation where the beneficiary was wrong and someone has passed away, and you need help figuring that out, that's when you call. And our firm, we give a free, no catch, you know, just a free initial phone call. 
And our team is trained to just help you figure out what's going on. If it's the kind of thing our firm does, give you some options to figure it out. And so call our office or you can text us at this phone number 480-750-7788, 480-750-7788. Uh, you can write that number down, save it for later, Keystone Law Firm. And if you send us a text, you can do that right now. And that's also a good way to hold yourself accountable to getting this done, getting the ball moving, right? That whole thing of just getting it started is sometimes the hardest thing. And all you have to do is pick up your phone. It's sitting right next to you. It's probably in your hand. Open up your text messaging app and send a text to 750-7788-480-750-7788. And just say you'd like to schedule your first appointment. All right, after the break, we're gonna we got lots more mistakes to go through. Talk to you guys in a minute. Welcome back, everybody. Good morning. This is Francisco Servent with Rethink Your Legacy. This show is, this is sort of my way, I'm an estate planning attorney, and this is my way to peel the curtain back, share everything that I possibly can about how, how so many clients have either protected their families, gotten stuff done, or how, you know, when, the, when stuff wasn't done correctly, how they've had to navigate through the probate system or a will contest or a guardianship case to take care of their mom or their dad or a brother or something like that. And this is just the best way for me to just unload on you guys. So I'm sorry that I unload, but here you get the benefit of it. And uh, like I said, I'm an estate planning attorney. We do asset protection. We do probate guardianship. So we see a lot of the problems that happen and that lets us do a much better job on the estate planning side when we're actually protecting your stuff up front. So when somebody comes to us and says, what do I need to do? We've been through all the nightmares. So it's like, okay, let's make sure we plug that hole, this hole, that hole, that hole. Today, the hole we're talking about is beneficiaries that you designate on all your different stuff. You designate beneficiaries on bank accounts, on life insurance, on annuities, on IRAs, on 401ks. Uh, you can designate them on your car, on your house. You can do it on your savings account. You can do it on a CD, a savings bond. You can do it on a brokerage account. What else can you... There's so many different things you can name a beneficiary on which means there's just so many different ways people have screwed this up. And so I hope to give you some ideas today that help you not screw it up for your family. Um, I'm giving away a, my handout for today is a how to name beneficiaries. It's an article with 10 of the most common mistakes people make. And then it's the instructions on how to name your beneficiaries. So you know what? Get it. Uh, if your attorney did your estate plan and didn't give you something like this, slap their hand, shame on them. I will give it to you. Go to my website, go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com. I'm happy for you to grab that. Just jump over to the website right now, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. You can punch it in your phone, enter your name and email. <clears throat> You'll see where to do that, and it'll send it right to your inbox so it's stored and saved uh, for whenever you need to use it. The other thing is if you need help with this, call our office. You want one-on-one -on -one help, then call our office. It's 480-750-7788. Uh, you can also text us because, you know, that's just what we all do these days. My team will get back to you first thing Monday morning. All right, so we talked about the first biggest mistake. Uh, the two other the two other bigger ones that come up a lot are not even naming a beneficiary at all, which I've got, ugh, and then not naming a contingent beneficiary. So not naming a beneficiary at all. What happens when you when if you forget to name a beneficiary at all? This probably we probably get a phone call on this maybe every other week, maybe one, like two or three times a month where somebody's uh, parent has passed away. Nobody's fighting. They had a will. They had a trust. Everything's all great, except the uh, they're being told by the bank or the brokerage account or the life insurance, you know, somebody like that, 
that there's no beneficiary designated on the account. There was nobody named jointly on the account. There was nobody named anything except for the person who died. And then what? Well, now it's stuck. There's no beneficiary. Now it's stuck. And so they're calling us saying, how do I get the account? They won't give it to me. This is so frustrating. If that's you, call. You're going to have to do some probate work. Blech. Yeah, it sucks. Probate sucks. It's a waste of money. And so hopefully you're here. You can avoid it. If you're in that already, give us a call to let us help you guide you through it. 480-750-7788. That's what is required under Arizona law if you don't have a beneficiary named. Sorry, there, you're, you, just, you, know, like you just made the decision to put that account into probate. Well, okay, yeah, your family's then going to have to hire a lawyer, pay probate fees, pay the probate court, and waste all that money. Don't waste that money, okay? It's it's a waste of money. The, th- the other thing that I really hate about going through probate when, it, when we really don't have to is, is that um, probate requires sending notices out to all of these people in your family. You may not care to have them know anything about your affairs, but the probate process requires it. And I've just seen where that can turn into a, a, a like a, a gold digging investigation for lack of a better term, where these people who shouldn't know anything about your affairs now do, and they're seeing dollar signs and they're like, Ooh, maybe I can get a little bit of money out of here. I've literally had people ask me, you know, I know I'm not entitled to anything, but can't I just, you know, file a lawsuit and get get them to pay me something? I've literally had people ask me that. You don't want that happening. So check, right? Don't fail to name a beneficiary. Get my hand out. Go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Enter your name and email and download it. It will tell you how to name beneficiaries for your different accounts. It's simple, but you can figure it out, and there's the, there's the tool to do it, radio.keystonelawfirm.com. The next, the third biggest mistake we see is one that I get frustrated with, with institutions on this, with banks and stuff, because they don't make this very clear on their form. So it, it requires you to pay closer attention, but it's naming contingent beneficiaries. And how this all works, it's it's such a, honestly, it can be a mess. What's a contingent beneficiary? Contingent beneficiary is who will receive it if your primary beneficiaries don't survive. So if you pass away on day one and you're, you've got beneficiaries A and B named and you've got contingent beneficiaries, you know, C and D named, and when you pass away... A and B have also already died, then it will go to your contingent beneficiaries. On most institutions, most banks, you know, investment companies, financial advisors, life insurance, things like that, most of those, you can name a backup beneficiary. That's the contingent. And you can say if you want it to go 50-50 to, you know, these two or whatever, you can kind of play around with those percentages. What I don't like about a lot of these forms is they don't make it very clear whether or not it goes to your contingent beneficiaries if only one of your primaries is predeceased. So you know what I mean? If you had two primary beneficiaries and and one of them predeceased you, does it then bring in your contingent beneficiaries to take that one's share or does that one's share go to your other primary beneficiary? So I, 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 I caution you, like I just plant that idea in your mind to make sure you ask that question as you're filling this out because you don't want to assume one thing and then that's not how it works. You want to make sure you've got those set up correctly. Now, I think for a lot of clients who are married, you're just naming your spouse as the primary beneficiary and your maybe your children as the contingent. So it's a little bit more straightforward when you only have one primary. But if you've got, you know, multiple primary beneficiaries and then some contingent beneficiaries, 
you just really need to understand how they do it. And I will tell you that all of these different banks and financial advisors and life insurance companies, they do not do it the same way from one to the next. You'll have to figure it out from one to the next. I'm, uh, ugh. So it can be a hassle, but that's something to make sure you really understand what they do at Fidelity versus Schwab versus Chase versus Merrill Lynch, blah, 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 all of them, okay? Um, that's naming contingent beneficiaries. Okay, good. So we've got three down out of ten. So I've got seven more to go. If you want the handout on how to name your beneficiaries, and it'll explain all these ten mistakes as well, then go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com. I want you to get it, download it, enter your name and email so I can send it to you, and the system will drop it in your email, save it for later. Um, if you need help, this is, so if you are, if you've not ever set up a will or trust before, I recommend you schedule this free phone call because you can ask any question you want. You know, do I need a will? Do I need a trust? Whatever. If you've maybe done a will or trust and it's more than five years old, it's definitely time to update it. There's been a lot of legal changes. It's time to call and get it up to date. Call and get it, get on the calendar. And and I would say, especially if you are in that sort of 60 to 70 age range, that is a perfect time, preferably closer to 60, but that is a perfect time to get this buttoned up, get it put together, make sure it's right. All right. So put this phone number in your phone. You can do it right now. Send a text message. 480-750-7788, and my team will give you a call back to help you schedule that first appointment. Good morning. Welcome back, everybody. Good morning. This is Francisco Servet with Rethink Your Legacy. Today, I'm offering you the chance to get what we give our clients, how a, a, a handout, a brochure, a flyer, it's I don't know how many pages long this thing is. It's multiple pages long. How to name beneficiaries on all your stuff. Don't screw this up. This handout will tell you what are the common mistakes people make. It'll tell you how to designate beneficiaries on your different kinds of accounts, different kinds of assets, different kinds of property. It's going to tell you how to do that. And I'm giving this to you, putting it in your hands. This is how you take... $100,000 away from probate attorneys and put it back in your pocket. Our average probate fee in Arizona is in the five figures. Five. That's over $10,000. Please take this money back from probate attorneys. (laughs) I don't want your family to be funding their families' vacations and blah, 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 blah. (laughs) Fund your own family's vacation. So what I'm offering, I'm offering that to you. You have to go to my website to get it. It's radio.keystonelawfirm.com. And you just enter your name and email. The system will send it to you. You can punch this in on your phone. Just open your browser, you know, Google or whatever. Type in radio.keystonelawfirm.com. You'll see if you scroll down, there's a little box for your name, your email, hit submit, and the system will process it. it takes a couple minutes, and then it'll send it right to your inbox. Okay, the other thing is if you need help now, don't wait. Write down this phone number, 480-750-7788. That is the phone number for you to be able to call or text and just ask for help. Your first phone appointment is free. We set that up because it's maybe the first time you've ever called a law firm and you just need to be able to ask some questions. How does this work? I don't want to get charged if I'm not, you know, like, am I on the stopwatch already kind of a thing? No, no. That first phone call is for you to ask questions. Um, And so get that scheduled for yourself right now if you need some one-on-one help and you either are just tired of trying to figure this out or you just know you want to work with an expert who's done it a thousand times. 480-750-7788. Well, With our topic today, we've covered 
three. Have we only covered three? Okay, we've only covered three of these top 10 mistakes. So I've got some more to go here. The next one I want to make sure you guys know about is this common thing that gets done. And so it's so, it's kind of, I just have to like let you guys in on a little bit of my thinking behind the scenes. Um, it's really neat in a way. It's like I get to be a observer of human behavior. You know, we all like people watching. I get to see how uh, uh, adult children, you know, big kids, adult kids, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, react and what they do and the th- and their thinking, their thought process after their family, their loved one, their parent has died. Because they're asking me the questions, you know, well, am I allowed to do this? Well, can I do that? Well, you know, how do we have to do this? And and when they're asking those questions, you know what's what they're thinking, right? Well, this next mistake is one that still surprises me because I guess just the nature of humanity. So here's what it is. The mistake is when you you have multiple kids, but you name one of them as a beneficiary on stuff, and you've got this verbal agreement with them to split it among all the kids. Oh, man. Uh, I have to tell you that I'm the one that they sit down after you die. I'm the one they sit down with, and they ask me the question, so I'm the beneficiary on this, right? Yes, you are. And so, does that mean it's legally mine? Yes, it means it's legally yours. Does that so does that mean then if I don't if I don't split it with my siblings, you know, can they can they force can they like force me to split it with them? Is there anything, you know, am I going to get in trouble? <laughs> They're literally asking me that question. <sighs> You're not here anymore. And and maybe, you know, maybe you can come haunt them. I don't know. But if you're not here to guilt them into doing it, I get these questions all the time. And we have to advise them according to the law, according to their rights. I always try to bring in the guilt and shame that they're going to feel if they don't do what you wanted. But I can't force them to split it. And guys, they don't. <laughs> That's the ridiculous part about this is that they don't. So if you've got, you know, if you've got a life insurance policy and you've named or, you know, an account or something that you've named one child and you've got this verbal deal with them to split it with the others, just, just take yourself, you know, pause for a second and say, okay, before I heard Francisco talk about this, that was what that was what I thought was the best way to take care of it. Now I know better, so I'm going to now do something different. And what you I recommend you do is you name all of them equally. Trust me, if you want them to get it equally, name all of them equally. It is just the best way to do it. Don't don't put that um <sighs> moral struggle on the one who just is like, well, they named me. I was especially helpful there towards the end. And trust me, there's all kinds of machinations that goes on in their mind to justify that they get to keep it and not share it. Just name them all. It is so much healthier for all of your family. You don't want to put them in between each other. It Just trust me, you don't. Please don't. <laughs> so that's the next big mistake. I'm happy to spend a lot of time talking about that one. If you want, again, this is if that's you and you've got that, then you need to go get this handout on my website. It's free. Download it, save it, so you can figure this out and learn all these mistakes. It's radio.keystonelawfirm.com. If you want one-on-one help, this is the phone number. Send a text right now, 480-750-7788. Okay, so we've got a few more to go here. Um, I want to hit on what happens with your if you've got little kids. If you've got little kids out there, you've heard of the need to name guardians for them, right? If you, uh, your spouse pass away, you've got to have somebody designated to take care of them if you're gone. And my wife and I have kids. We've done that. We've updated it multiple times. It's something, obviously, we care about our kids having that. 
Where it gets tricky is when you name beneficiaries at the life insurance or on your retirement account. You know, married couples, it's easy. You just designate each other. But if you've got minor kids, your my next original thought was, well, you name the kids as the contingent beneficiaries. Hmm. Yeah. Here's what happens when you do that. If you pass away, we had a single dad who died. And he was, well, they were divorced, but he died. He had his son named as beneficiary on retirement accounts and things like that. Guess what's happening now? So the son, who's a minor, has to get an adult to hire a lawyer to have the court appoint somebody to hold those funds for him until he turns 18. So here's two big problems when you name a minor as a beneficiary. First problem is that the um, you have to get the court to appoint someone. You're wasting ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars right there. The second problem is once all that is done, that money is going to be cashed out, liquidated, and piled up in the hands of this child on their 18th birthday. Oh yay, happy birthday. Here's a hundred thousand dollars. Here's three hundred thousand dollars. We had one who received four hundred thousand dollars. Completely went off the rails. Um, dropped out of uh, their whole plan to go to college and just basically lived like a freeloader until the, well, we lost track of them. Honestly, we, we lost track of them. It was unfortunate. And I can only picture what happened to their life. So don't name a minor as a direct beneficiary on anything. You want to have it be controlled for them way past their 18th birthday. Whew. Okay, so we've got five more. I've only got one more segment. I'm coming up on a break. We're going to run out of time, so go get the rest of this handout. I'll cover as much as I can in the next segment. Go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com. How to name beneficiaries. Go get this handout. It's a great article with all the mistakes and the instructions for how to do it. How go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com if you want one on one help. So, here, if this is you, right, if you're approaching or you're in retirement, you need to be thinking about this stuff. Give us a call, send us a text, let us figure out with you, you know, what are the tweaks you need to make, whether you need to create a will or a trust, whether you need to update your will or your trust, and then do you, how to designate beneficiaries on different things. Give us a call or send a text. It's easy to this phone number, 480-750-7788, 480-750-7788. Welcome back to Rethink Your Legacy. Good morning, everybody. This is Francisco Servent. I often refer to myself as your attorney and problem solver at law. When I went to law school, I really thought that I had all these stereotypes in my mind about what lawyers were like. Going to law school confirmed those stereotypes for me. It was kind of my first experience, like, ooh, yeah, they kind of are like that. Then I started to work for lawyers and law firms, and it confirmed it even more. Holy moly, lawyers are really like all these stereotypes. And I just committed 100% to my wife when I was going into law school, because I got an engineering degree. I was on path to be an engineer. And when I switched to law school, she was like, hey, what are you doing? I don't want you to be becoming one of those lawyers. And she really helped me be accountable to myself to never become one of those lawyers. And so along the way, it clicked for me like, ah, I'm an attorney and problem solver outlaw. So I hope that helps you guys know a little bit of uh, why I do what I do. Even this radio show, I pay tons of money to be able to communicate this to you guys because I just feel like it's part of my obligation to share my experience, what I've learned, what so many families I've seen have been through. So hopefully you can avoid that. My own you know, my own grandpa on my mom's side, my grandma on my dad's side have completely just different stories about how their estates went. And, you know, if you're listening to this, you've got the opportunity to think and picture what you want that to look like for you. You know, what do you want your family, your loved ones to experience 
when that time comes. It's not a matter of if, is it, right? This is a matter of when. None of us is guaranteed tomorrow. Think about that. I want to I wanna really challenge you for a second. Think about that. None of us is guaranteed tomorrow, Monday. You know, here we are, Sunday morning. We're not even guaranteed later today. The only moment we really, really have is right now. And, and sometimes that just, that just, you know, sinks into my soul and just, holy moly, makes me appreciate even this moment I have with you guys. Um, so what do you want that to look like? We've got to take action on it now. It's so easy to procrastinate this, right? If you've been procrastinating it, that's how easy it is. Think of all the moments where something has prompted you to say, yeah, I need to do this. And we roll our eyes like, oh, I need to do this. I was just talking with a friend this week, really close friend. Like, yeah, we got the packet. We just, uh, we haven't done it yet. It's, it's too easy, isn't it? It's just too easy. So don't wait, right? We got to take a step. We got to take a, a, a step in that direction and just take one more step and one more step. Every day we take another step. So the step I invite you to take right now is to send a text message to my firm And just say, I don't know what I need to do. I need to get started. And it's easy. We make it, we make it about as easy as we can. We don't send you a 50 page questionnaire to fill out. We don't ask you to send us a blank check. We don't want to, you know, our firm is not about taking all your money. It's about protecting all your money. Probate fees out there, they easily get into the 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 range. We've seen a couple of them get into the multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars protect your family from that nightmare. Send a text message to 480-750-7788. You can get started just by a text message. My team will respond tomorrow, help you find a time that um, works for you for a first phone call. Talk with my team, say what's going on. We'll figure it out. Trust me, we don't send you that 50 page questionnaire. That's just a, that's just a, I don't, I don't believe in that. So what are the other, I've, I've only got time to cover two more mistakes. And, and so I've got the whole 10 mistakes. I've got the handout on how to name beneficiaries. So go to my website and get it at radio.keystonelawfirm.com if you want all of it. The next two are, if is a mis, it is a mistake to name a special needs person, someone who has special needs as a beneficiary on anything. They usually do qualify for benefits, and the benefits can be, you know, providing care for them, care management. Maybe it's providing a, a place to live. Maybe it's providing medical coverage, um, or maybe it's just providing direct um, SSI assistance. You know, and and if you leave them anything, boom, that could trigger them being disqualified from all of that and really upending their life. And you know, with somebody who is a special person that they, you've got to, the best thing for them is to keep things going as expected. So don't name them as a direct beneficiary. And then the the other mistake I wanted to cover is not the same, but it's related. It's naming somebody who you know is just going to destroy their own life with the money. Naming them as a beneficiary, right? Giving them money when you know they're going to do something bad with it. Um, I hear too many of you guys. This is this only ever comes out of the <laughs> the mouth of us men. I don't know why, but I've heard it too many times. And if you've said it, you know I'm talking about you. Where us guys say, "Man, they'll figure it out when I'm gone." Yeah, trust me, they will have to figure it out. And <clears throat> I don't know. I, I approach it differently because I've experienced it on behalf of so many families. If you've ever said that, or if your husband has said that, you need to grab him by the ear and say, sorry, buddy, (laughs) we're not doing it that way. If you've said it yourself, I want you to consider that this is the very last experience that you are giving your family. This is the last thing that they're going to experience from you. You will have died. And now they are going to be dealing with all of this stuff. And if the last thing they remember you saying about this is, meh, you'll figure it out when I'm gone. I Yeah, I guess they will. And that's the legacy. That is the memory you're going to leave behind. I, I, I 
the people that I work with, the people who value it more than that, who think it's more important than that, you need to go get this from my website. You should consider calling and working with us one-on-one. If it's, if it's more important to you than that, if your family is more important to you than just an afterthought of a throwaway comment like, meh, you'll figure it out when I'm gone, then go to radio.keystonelawfirm.com. Get this handout. Learn these mistakes. Learn how to name beneficiaries correctly. And then give us a call so that you can start down the path of learning what documents you need to put in place for your family, how you should structure, you know, the trustees or the executors who should be named. Do you need a living will? Do you need a do you need a trust? Do you need a healthcare power of attorney? Do you need to update documents from Colorado because that's where you created them last or California or Washington or Wisconsin? All those questions, right? You need to get them answered because it's more important to you than the comment, meh, you'll figure it out when I'm gone. I hope that's not you. If it's not you, then definitely give us a call, 480-750-7788, and get your first free phone call scheduled. Let my team help you figure out what your options are. Uh, Don't be scared about pricing. We have pricing. We have very, very budget-minded pricing, a few hundred dollars. We also have very boutique and sophisticated one-on-one private services, you know, five, eight, ten, twelve thousand. Um, dollars. It, it, you can choose the level of service you want from our firm. It's one of the advantages of working with a firm that's done this for 15 years and with a firm who's owned by somebody who's a former engineer. I love being able to leverage technology and software so that we can offer some of our amazing services under a really budget-friendly price. So you don't need to be afraid of that. Just give us a call, 480 480- 7507788 um, or go to the website and get my handout get the free article and get the free instructions on how to name beneficiaries at radio.keystonelawfirm.com and that's all I have for the show today the last thing I'll do is I will plug something coming up with my firm in the next um, few weeks we are going to be resuming our our webinars on estate planning, and we have one coming up in August. Uh, the, this next one will be August at 19 at 11.30 in the morning or kind of lunchtime. And this one will be titled, Does Your Estate Plan Need a Tune-Up? So I'll be sharing more information with you about how to sign up for that when the time comes. All right, guys, go out there and start creating your new legacy.